how to set the perfect exposure in landscape photography? I think this is one of the most common questions that I get uh, when people ask me about landscape photography. So I will talk about today uh, about the elements that influence how you set the exposure, then the elements that decide the actual exposure. And in the end, I will share with you how do I think you should photograph underexpose or overexpose. So let's get started. Before you want to set an exposure for a certain scene, you have to evaluate the scene and you have to understand the elements that compose a certain landscape in front of you if you want to photograph it the best way uh, possible. So there are some elements that will get into the photo and your exposure will have to convey a certain idea or a certain feeling. And there are three main elements that form any good landscape photo. And the first element is the subject. This is the most important thing. And why I want to talk about these elements is because, for example, um, when you are conscious about the subject that you want to photograph, your exposure will make sure that the subject is in focus. And you will see that the exposure triangle has one uh, element of it that controls the depth of field, how much in uh, your photo is going to be unclear. And that is a, a very important setting. And in order for you to know how to set that, you have to know what your subject is or point of focus or area of focus and how far from you is that area of focus. And that is extremely important. So the subject should be clear, should be only one in the photo. It should not uh, have elements around it that should confuse the viewer uh, in uh, creating uh, a greater contrast and compete with the subject for attention. You should not place the subject near the edges of the photo or near the corners of the photo. After that, you're going to need a composition that will guide the attention of the viewer to the subject. This is basically the visual journey through the photo. The composition, you have to um, make it as simple as possible. Sometimes landscape, uh, landscape photography, it's much more about the elements that you leave out than the elements you, you include. The third element that is really important is light. And first of all, you have to, you need to have two sub sub elements over here. So first of all, you need that element that says quality light and quality light. It's a term that it's really vague and it's in a way it's very difficult to uh, define. And it, the easiest way to define it is through examples. Uh, so um, sunrise light, sunset light, um, this is light that has a very uh, calm feeling to it. It has a pleasant color attached to it. The contrast between light and darkness is really low, so you, ha you can capture everything in one shot. Then you have diffuse light, you have stormy or dramatic light, you have folky situations. But in some situations, even dramatic, harsh light in the middle of the day can have a great impact on the landscape. Second most important thing about light is that when you think about the frame, the light should favor only the subject. Or if the light doesn't favor only the subject, then the other elements that are uh, that benefit from that light should not compete with the subject. Now let's move on to the exposure triangle. And I'm pretty sure everyone heard about the exposure triangle. I have three elements that control the exposure, how the image looks. And you have exposure time, aperture, and ISO. Now, whoa you will have to balance these three elements in order for you to get what you want. In landscape photography, there are two situations. You are with the camera on a tripod or with the camera off the tripod. Let's go with uh, the less common situation when you don't have a tripod. You usually have a tripod with you as a landscape photographer. But if you don't have um, a tripod, then your priority is to set the ISO in aperture in such a way that you have an exposure time that is at least one over the focal length that you're using. 
So let me just explain. If you're shooting at 50 millimeters, you should have at least one over 50th of a second. Okay. If you're photographing with 200 millimeters, you should have at least one over 200 millimeters. The best scenario would be to have the double for this. The second thing that you're going to um, adjust is um, the aperture because it doesn't matter if you're photographing from hand or from a, from a tripod, you want your subject to be in focus. This is also related to the place where you point, where you're uh, putting the focus. So it's also related to the focal length. There are a lot of things that are going on when you're setting an exposure, but let's keep it simple for now. And um, you have to, you need to have a depth of field that is big enough for the viewer to understand the image. If you're photographing with a the telephoto, then it's okay to have a shallow depth of field so you can go with uh, f5.6 or f6.3 uh, or 8 because you're going to put the focus point on the subject and um, the subject is going to be in sharp because usually the uh, longer focal length in landscape photography captures uh, an element that's really far away and the fields are compressing and that element is in focus. So everything is going to be uh, okay. But if you're photographing with a wider lens, then you might want to have uh, uh, an aperture that is smaller, like f8 or f11 or f16 to increase the depth of field. Now, the minute you have, the moment you have um, a shorter exposure time and an aperture that is closing, then less light enters uh, the camera. So because of that, in order to balance these two elements that um, decrease the amount of light that goes into the camera, you'll have to increase the ISO. The problem is that the ISO is the digital sensitivity of the sensor. And the more you go up with it, the more noise you'll introduce in the photo. Now let's go to the most common situation that the camera is on the tripod. Now, you can have whatever exposure time you want because the camera is fixed and it's on a tripod. I think as a landscape photographer, you should always have a tripod. Why? Because now you can make creative decisions uh, with your exposure time. So let's say you're in front uh, of, of a mountain. You don't see elements moving. So it doesn't matter the exposure time. You, you just adjust First, the first thing that I'm, I would adjust, is it would be the aperture because I want the biggest depth of field and I would go F11 or F16 and I would leave the ISO to 100 and then I will go adjust the exposure time in order to have an image that is um, balanced in the right way in terms of, of brightness. How do I know when the image is balanced in the right way? in terms of brightness. Remember what I told you about light? I told you that the light should uh, put the subject in the most light. So the most light in the scene should be on the subject. So now I'm going to expose for that area of light. So I will adjust the exposure time in order to have the subject that it's all, it's in, uh, in light to have it at the right exposure. I don't want to have the subject um, underexposed or overexposed. So that area should be perfectly exposed. When you're going to do that, because only the subject benefits from the most amount of light, the rest of the scene is going to be in darkness. So here comes the answer to that question. How am I photographing underexposed or overexposed? Neither. My images usually look darker in the other areas because I'm searching for the light only. I'm searching for situations where the light goes only on the subject. I, if I'm in the forest and there is wind in the forest, now I have to decide if I want to capture the leaves of the trees standing still or I want to capture that movement. My personal preference is to capture the movement because I think it, it sets a mood and it, um, it sends a message to the viewer that 
it was windy that day. But let's say that you want to have the leaves frozen in time. Then you will have to have a really short exposure of time. Depending on how windy it is, you will have to go maybe to hundredth of a second, four hundredth of a second. You don't know until you try it. So you set that exposure time. You go with a nice with a, a, an aperture of let's say f eight. You start there, and then you adjust the ISO. So if you want to go with a really short exposure time in a dark situation or in a place where the light is darker you will have to raise the ISO up. As a landscape photographer, in landscape photography, you want a greater depth of field. The aperture controls the depth of field. The, the closer the aperture, the bigger the depth of field. And in landscape photography, usually you want everything to be in clear or in focus. That is why you want F8, F11, F16. Let's get back to the exposure triangle. You are in front of a waterfall. You, ha you can uh, capture the water frozen in time, the movement of the water frozen in time, or you can make a longer exposure and um, you can uh, have that milky look of the water. The idea is when you have the camera on a tripod, you can control the exposure time. And the expo when you have a short exposure time, then you will have a um, uh, the movement of whatever is moving in front of you frozen in time. When you have a longer exposure time, one starting from one tenth of a second and going to one fifth, one second, two seconds, 30 seconds, a couple of minutes, you will capture the movement in front of you. And you can only do that by having the camera on the tripod. If you want to learn more about landscape photography, you can purchase my ebook or you can join me for one of my workshops. Uh, the link for this is in the description of this video. And until next time, keep on photographing because it's the only way that you can get better. Thanks for watching and bye-bye.